you know, these kinds of innovations, these kinds of uh, transformational leaps are much needed in aviation um, and are going to make life much more efficient going forward. Welcome to Hangar X Studios, where former fighter pilot and host John Ramstead takes us on a journey across aerospace as it enters an historic period of innovation and transformation. Our guests include aviation experts, pilots, financiers, military leaders, and innovators of all types. Buckle up for another episode of Hangar X. Hey, welcome to the Hangar X podcast, where we talk about the future of not only aerospace, but aerospace innovation. And you're going to be hearing some of the most fascinating guests just from their backgrounds, their history, people that are innovators, people that are developing new technology and new uses for aerospace. And today I'm really excited to have Michael Tapp on the show. He recently joined and is the head of the advisory board for XTI Aerospace. So, Michael, welcome to our podcast. Thank you, John. I'm so glad to be here. And I, I loved hearing a little bit about your story before we got started and we were sitting here chatting about your interest in aviation started a long time ago. Could you could you kind of weave that in your, your interest in aviation and a little bit about your business career? Well, you know, I think humans in general are fascinated by avi aviation. Uh, and as a young kid, I was always fascinated by flying. I, I absolutely remember my first commercial flight uh, when our family took a trip to Disneyland. Uh, it was the first time I'd ever been on an airplane, and I remember that day and have just been fascinated by flying since then. Um, you know, even in, in high school, I thought, what am I going to do as a career, as a profession, and, you know, is aviation going to ever be part of that? Uh, I actually started my uh, undergraduate degree in aerospace engineering because I thought, well, those guys get to fly, right? Like, that'll be fun. I'm going to do something in that space. Uh, it didn't take long to figure out that the aerospace engineers do not fly. They build the birds. Yep, uh, they build the birds and other people get to fly them. That's exactly right. So yep. I was like, hey, wait a second. No, no, I want to fly. So um, I ended up changing my major and finishing an engineering degree and moving on into other things. But then, you know, early in my career, I actually had the opportunity to start a pilot's a private pilot's license. And, you know, like so many people who start, you're always torn between the time and the money to do it. And, and life got busy and I ultimately didn't finish it. But um, just the the thought of, aviation and certainly private aviation and, and the innovation in the industry. But here's the real question. Did you ever get to land an airplane solo? No. Okay. But you did land. I did land. Okay. If landings equal takeoffs, you know what? You're in a good place. Yes, that's good. Yep. We're still sitting here. Yep. So, um, so at the end of the day, I think, you know, being involved in innovation, um, it, the aviation industry has gone through a lot of innovations over time. But uh, it's been a while since anything's been truly transformative, at least on the fixed wing side. So that's one of the reasons why I think uh, XTI is so fascinating in what they're trying to accomplish. So joining the XTI, you know, the advisory board, and you're kind of looking at the space of this crossover vertical takeoff and landing as it's really just emerging right now. What are some of the things that got you most excited about being part of aerospace right now and what's happening? Well, I think in the industry right now, there's just a lot going on with the air taxi uh, takeoff and the whole new category being developed. I think what's super interesting about XTI is you know, they're really blending the best of a rotorcraft um, scenario with fixed wing and, and creating a new, uh, really a new air type that can uh, truly transform regional aviation, not just short distances, but, but regional aviation. A hallmark of one of the things that uh, is really important to you is, first of all, developing deep relationships. And that's how you've always led, right, through venture capital and many other things that you've done that, that have led you to this point in your career. But the other thing that you are passionate about is also innovation. And when you think about innovation in aerospace today, what, what are you kind of seeing if we're almost looking 10 years out? Why is innovation so important today when you actually think of the industry, which for the most part, has been kind of static. There's been some improvements in maybe engines and some avionics, but there has not been an entirely new airframe or an entirely new category of aircraft developed in 40, 50 years. Hmm. It's fascinating. I think, you know, just as our society develops, the population grows, uh, our need for infrastructure and our need for mobility continues to increase. And the way that we've been able to do it historically has worked. 
but I don't know that it is going to be as efficient as we need in the future. And so I think, you know, these kinds of innovations, these kinds of uh, transformational leaps are much needed in aviation um, and are going to make life much more efficient going forward. So here's a thought I have just as, a, as we're looking at what's driving innovation right now. First of all, we're looking at our, our population has grown. Yeah. Right. There's such a, a density of population. We're looking at our transportation system, which is linked to our roads and our traditional airways right now. And it is, it's maxed out. We were just talking to a friend of ours. And when you're driving in LA, it's not about how much distance it is. It could be eight miles. Nobody, nobody knows the distance. It's like, no, that's either two to four hours, depending on the time of day you leave. Mm-hmm. And it's getting worse and worse. And if it's you look unknowable. at- unknowable, It's unknowable is what he said. And uh, the the time, and we look at like we just had a hurricane, and we look at dis- from disaster recovery to life flight, to military, to just transportation in urban environments, to even just getting cargo where it needs to be outside of urban environments. There's there's so much change happening right now, and I think some of the best thinkers in the world are trying to solve a lot of problems, and I think it's driving a lot of the innovation. And a big part of that, I think, is going to be. Um, the airspace around us and how we even how we even not, not only communicate but how we get from A to B or get products or people or what help assistance from A to B. Michael, right now where we're at in the present, there is so much innovation happening in really every area of life, and I'm seeing it now in aerospace more than I've personally ever seen it. What do you think is driving that right now? Well, it's a great question. I think, you know, num- number one, the population density and the growth that we're experiencing, urban areas are continuing to sprawl. Our infrastructure uh, and its ability to handle that is is just getting challenged in traditional forms. Um, I think more and more people would like to be further away from some of the density, but, you know, there's this trade-off, right? Like the commercial value is is in the, in the urban centers, but maybe my lifestyle value is pushing me further away. Uh, so how do I balance that? And and right now I'm I'm stuck with traditional forms. So I think you know the innovation is being driven by that. That's the demand side, and then also the technology and the advancements in technology and materials and the things that we can do uh, have have dramatically grown and are continuing to grow at an exponential rate. And so when you find the convergence of those things, I think it's 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 bleeding into many industries, particularly aerospace and aviation, where the things that we can do now are more than we've ever been able to do in the past. And, and the benefits of doing them uh, to meet the demands in the market are now undeniable. Yeah, I'm just thinking of some of those drivers, right? Uh, from power plants to uh, what airframes are made out of, to flight control systems, to you're, you're like all these enabling technologies have actually allowed big thinkers, engineers to actually say, you know what, if we put all this together, we could solve this problem. Right. So question for you then, this whole space, VTOL, which is taking off that XTI is a a part of, and there's a whole bunch of different categories within there. Um, XTI is much longer range, fast, you know, 300 knots and 700 mile range versus some of the small, you know, urban, you know, move things uh, around packages, delivery, cargo. But what is the problem that's being solved with this innovation, let's say over the next five years? Well, I think you know, it probably depends on the market and the application that you're going after. Certainly in the private aviation world, it's time and convenience. The ability to avoid an FBO, um, shorten the time it takes to get from point A to point B because you can go point to point. And I think that's going to be a critical driver um, in, in that segment. Certainly in the, the medical transport segment, it's the, it's the value of the golden hour and the ability to extend that from a range standpoint and shorten the time. Uh, to get from point A to point B, and then being able to get you where you need to go, not just where you can go, uh, which are the constraints of range. So in a helicopter situation, it's constrained by range. And so- And speed. Yes, range and speed. And Mm -hmm. so you may get transported to the nearest hospital, but not where you really need to go. And so, you know, the TriFan allows the dramatic extension of that golden uh, hour window such that we can get you to the place where you actually need to be. So I think those are two, you know, examples. Um, obviously, there's going to be some military examples down the road as well, um, where the TriFan could be, uh, you know, very instrumental in unique situations. Yeah. 
Yeah, we could probably do a whole podcast uh, podcast episode just on use cases. And you know, as you think of this industry, and I'm 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 looking ahead because this is all about solving problems. And you, I mean, you innovate because what's what's happening, what you're doing now, is not working. So as, as you look five and ten years out in the development of of the TriFan and other technologies, what are some of you think the biggest challenges that the industry and some of these companies are going to have to overcome? To, to bring this to market and make it a reality? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, number one, I think, you know, it takes a lot of capital to pull these things off. So um, having access to capital and the confidence to do that over a long period of time is critical. Um, also, I would say, you know, these are creating new categories from a regulatory standpoint, and they're pushing, they're pushing into, you know, things, problems that, haven't been solved, it's have never needed to be solved. So like the air taxi world, right? We've never had to deal with lanes in the sky in an urban setting that are highly congested. Right. All Airspace controlling yes, people coming in and out of helipad. Yeah, that's right. the a ATC is currently not set up to handle what needs to happen. That's right. So there's so, gonna have to be a lot of collaboration and partnership across all the players and the stakeholders in the entire industry. That's right. And infrastructure too. I think there's mm -hmm. going to be some infrastructure pieces that are going to get uh, need to get built out. Yep. Yeah, I'm also thinking one of the challenges to overcome too is just uh, the flight control systems, the engineering, the the safety factors. I mean, this is a whole new aircraft, and I know some of the things we've been talking about the inside conversations around that is because it's such an absolute focus, but it, it's fascinating what's going to have to be developed in software. AI, mm -hmm. some of the, the the tools that are out there right now is addressing this at a at a rate that uh, has been really really pleasantly surprising, actually. Right, and the great thing is, is the technology capabilities that we have today are allowing us to address those problems and put things uh, together that uh, can respond faster than a human can respond, and create the level of safety that we all expect and want. So let's do this as we kind of wrap up here. I want to. Uh, kind of put on your futurist hat, 10 years out. If you could wave, oh, let's just call it a, a realistic magic wand, and you're looking back 10 years from this point, what is happening? What, what does the world look like from an aviation perspective 10 years from now? Well, I think um, the ability to get from point to point will be common as opposed to, you know, unique and special. And rare and expensive, right? That's right. Yeah. And so I think that's going to be one of the biggest things that we see change. And they're going to, it's going to happen in, in multiple ways, multiple forms in that category. Because in human life, I'm thinking about organ transplant, disaster recovery, military applications, personal transport, getting people from rural areas to hubs where they can actually get either services they need or get the transportation that they need. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And I think... We're going to be looking up in the sky and it's going to be very different, isn't it? Some of the congestion that we see on the ground is going to uh, be removed, which would be a good thing, and then put into the sky. Uh, but uh, the sky will definitely get more congested. It will. So as we wrap up, just any, any final thoughts or comments? You just joined the, the advisory board for XTI. I know you're excited about this company and the, and the future of where it goes and just love to know your final thoughts. Yeah, I think... Um, you know, the advisory board for XTI, I'm super excited about that. Um, you know, I've, over the course of my career, you know, I really fundamentally value relationships and um, have sought to build uh, deep and long-term high trust relationships throughout my career. And, and that's really what an advisory board um, will be at XTI. It's going to be about relationships. And so um, I'm excited about the people that we're going to be able to bring to the table not only their expertise and their knowledge, but also just the relationships in the community that gets built around that. Awesome. Michael, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for taking the time. I love some of your insights. Love to have you back on, especially as things evolve and change and we keep innovating in this world and just uh, really appreciate what you're doing, leading the advisory board and your vision. So uh, thanks, for, thanks again, man. Uh, look forward to the next conversation. Thank you, John. It's been a pleasure to be here.